Good afternoon, everyone, and uh, welcome to our first Learn at Lunch webinar on getting e-commerce ready. And again, sorry for the confusion on the starting time. Uh, today, our host and my son, Brian Hurley of Hello World, will take us through how to get ready to sell online and also advise us on the, the supports that are available, available to you uh, to do this. Um, trading online has never been more important than it is right now. So understanding this topic is vital for business sustainability and growth. And if you're exploring online trading, please get in touch with us as we may be able to help you with uh, the business continuity voucher where you can access effectively free money to support you in putting a plan in place to save, stabilize and grow your business. Uh, we're also hosting a webinar at 2 p.m. tomorrow ar around this very topic which is all the financial supports that are available to you at this very difficult time. And I'll be circulating um, the login details for that later on. Uh, as always, if you have any questions after this session, please feel free to get in touch with us. Uh, in the meantime, I'll hand you over to Brian and please stay safe. Thank you. Perfect. Um, thank you very much, Gerald. I'd just like to thank the Waterford Chamber um, and everyone associated with the Waterford Chamber for having me on here to give this quick presentation on an introduction to e-commerce. So just bear with me while I open up my presentation screen here. Very good. Now you should all be able to see this, hopefully. I'll just make sure that you can. Very good. Excellent. So thank you very much, um, Waterford Chamber. Thank you, Gerald. Thank you, Linda, for everyone out there um, for having me on today. So I'm here to give you a quick introduction to getting e-commerce ready. Um, so just I'll go over quickly what the topics are going to be for this webinar. So we'll start with very simply, what is e-commerce? What am I talking about? We'll then quickly move into what services you can avail of right now. So social media and digital marketing, all that kind of stuff that you should have ready before you get up and selling online. We'll then talk about what supports are available for you to get your business up and running online. There's plenty of local enterprise office and enterprise Ireland grants that you can avail of. I'm then going to quickly give you a demo of something that I'm working on and um, supported by Waterford Chamber. And then we'll move into questions and answers. So let's jump right in. What is e-commerce? So nice and simply, e-commerce is buying and selling products and services online. Now, e-commerce generally includes some kind of electronic pay payment transaction, and that's a card or a bank transfer. But it should be noted that it doesn't actually require an electronic payment. You know, a lot of stores um, do finish the transaction in person, either with a click and collect service or um, a cash payment on delivery or even one of those, um, what do you call them, uh, transportable card reading machines that you can take right up to the door and take payments that way as well. So if you wanted to get started with e-commerce, what should you have set up right away? Well, you should get out there on social media is your first port of call. So starting with a Facebook business page, getting your LinkedIn business page, setting up your Twitter accounts, Instagram is extremely important in today's world of e-commerce, and then MailChimp for your email marketing needs. Some other things you should also look at getting set up, set up right away is a Google My Business account and also getting set up with your Waterford Chamber of Commerce profile as well. Now, for taking payments online, the two most popular payment methods out there, uh, well, payment service companies, are Stripe and PayPal. And I would recommend, if you do nothing after this webinar, to go on to Stripe, go on to PayPal, set up your accounts now, get verified. You're going to have to provide them with some information and, um, because you know, they do operate like a normal bank. While you're setting up these accounts, especially for the stuff like the banking services, you will, it is good to have some proofs of identity um, handy. You'll want multiple proofs of identity. So I know with Stripe, you're going to want at least a passport and a driver, driver's license with you. Um, a quick tip for when you're trying to, when you're getting verified online, if you ever come up with a cert, up against a service and they're asking you to prove your identity, um, and then also asking you to prove your, your address, they probably give you those two things in two separate steps. If they're asking for your identity, use your passport. 
If you're asking for your address, then use your driver's license. And um, normally you can't use the same document twice. So that's why it's better to do it that way rather than looking around for bank statements and everything else to prove your address. So passport for your actual identity, driver's license for your home address. Nice and simple to get set up that way. So what do you need to get set up? So what about social media? Well, social media is becoming very important for a place for people to sell products. It is quite a difficult sale. It still is because, you know, people don't really go onto social media to buy products. They go on there for other reasons. And then you have to try and grab their attention and pull them away. Out of all the social medias, Facebook, um, Twitter, LinkedIn, um, 80% of the social media orders, over 80%, I should say, are coming from the Facebook platform. Um, likes do not equal revenue, something that's very important. So what you're really looking for from your social media campaigns is conversions. You're looking to make money off them. So when you do a Facebook ad, a LinkedIn ad, a Twitter ad, any one of those, it's not so much about the engagement, it's how much money that, uh, how much of a return on investment you are getting for those advertising links. Photos are key for all of your postings. So whether or not you're paying for online advertising, photos play a huge part. You don't get much interaction at all for a text-based post, but add in a big, beautiful photo and you get a lot more interaction with those. Of course, photos are key, but videos are king. Videos have a huge amount of engagement online. It really grabs the, um, your, your pot potential customer's attention when they are scrolling down. All of a sudden, you've got a lot of moving images and flashy colors and all that kind of stuff to really try and break them out of you know, looking up their ex or whatever they actually went on to Facebook to do. So with the photos and the videos, you need to get used to creating your own accounts or creating your own campaigns, I should say. Using a feature, using a service like Canva is absolutely amazing. So Canva, you're able to create all your Facebook um, banner images. You'll be able to create perfectly sized Facebook image sizes and all that kind of stuff. I'm sure that you already have your logo. You already have a color scheme, something that you already use in your brick and mortar business. Just be aware that when you do move online and you start putting more and you start creating more profile pages for yourself, and um, they'll be looking for different image sizes. You know, some of them will be portraits, some of them will be landscape, some of them will be asking for a perfectly square logo. So you should have someone handy to, um, or, or learn yourself, to adapt your images, adapt your branding, adapt your logos for all the different types of services to make sure that you're looking as well as you can across them all. So I mentioned MailChimp. MailChimp is, is very invaluable to your business. And um, having a proper mail campaign can really keep your customers coming back um, for more. So once you do make a sale online, you generally are able to sell to that person over and over again. Um, and it really does help if you're there in their inbox. So if you give them an option to sign up to your newsletter, where you can send very customized um, marketing emails to them. MailChimp is a fantastic service. You can optimize it for mobile devices, seen as at least, if not more, more than half of all your email marketing opens will be on a mobile device. So you should optimize for mobile. You should check it before you send it out to your, to your, uh, to your potential customers and your existing customers, and definitely check it on your mobile. You should check every link, make sure that all the products you're advertising in your email marketing campaigns, make sure that they actually go someplace. And doesn't matter how good your email marketing looks and if they can't actually follow through to your products, in the world of GDPR, being able to unsubscribe uh, from email marketing campaigns is very important. The great thing about MailChimp is that it does include an auto unsubscribe button. So while you're adding in all those email addresses that you've collected from your customers and potential customers, and um, they'll be able to unsubscribe themselves without any interaction from you um, if they so choose. So you should really start drawing your email list now. You could grab a Excel sheet or numbers if you're using Mac or even and the Google Sheets feature and start putting together all your customers, everyone that you who've already agreed that they'd like to hear more from you. Um, I should note that I'm gonna be putting this whole slideshow together into a PDF. You'll see there's some links there and you'll be able to quickly follow these links to the available resources. And there's also a nice little article there summing up some of the best practices for email marketing. All right, so we are going to now segue into what e-commerce uh, business supports are available. So the lo your local enterprise office and Enterprise Ireland have a number of supports available to you. 
And I'll quickly go through four of these now. So the first one I'm gonna talk about is the Leo Business Continuity Voucher. Are there? So it's worth up to 2,500 in third party consultation costs. It's available to companies and sole traders with up to 50, 50 employees. And it can be used to get expert advice on how you can protect jobs and sales. So the continuity voucher is really for um, consultation. And um, it's for having someone come in and tell you how you, can, how you can make things better, how you can use technology to protect your jobs, or how you can take really any kind of measures at the moment during this COVID crisis to protect jobs, protect your sales moving forward. Now you can apply for this voucher directly to the Waterford Chamber of Commerce, and I'm sure um, Gerald or Linda would be very happy uh, to receive um, correspondence from you, and they'll be able to send you um, the link there to apply for your continuity voucher through them. Perfect. Um, next up, I'm going to talk about the trading online voucher. So the trading online voucher has been out for a while. It's worth up to 2,005 euro in e-commerce development and training costs. So, and it used to be, um, so it is co-funded. You will have to put up 10% of the funding yourself. And um, so it is 90% funded by the local enterprise office. It's for small businesses with up to 10 employees and you have to have less than 2 million in turnover. And if you already have one of these vouchers and you're looking for an upgrade, you can apply for a second voucher. So you can get up to two of these trading on now line vouchers. Now to apply for these, you should apply to your local enterprise office. And that's your, your so if you're in Waterford, you need to apply to, to your Waterford local enterprise office. And the great thing about this is, uh, about the trading online voucher, is that it can go towards actual development costs. So actually building your e-commerce site, even paying for some e-commerce services to get yourself up and running straight away, you can use the trading online voucher to pay for those. Another grant that's been out for a while is the Enterprise Ireland Innovation Voucher, or Innovation Grant, and it's up to 5,000 euro to explore a business opportunity or problem that you might be having. And it's for medium and small, uh, it's for, sorry, medium and small businesses with up to 200, 250 employees and less than 50 million in turnover. Now, you must use this, uh, use this voucher with a registered knowledge provider. So if you're here in Waterford, you should get in contact with RICON. And in fact, if you're going to apply for the innovation voucher, um, head on over to RICON, to the RICON website, and you can apply for the innovation voucher through them. Now, the last support that I'm going to talk about in this webinar is the Enterprise Ireland COVID-19 online retail scheme. This is a new scheme. It's a competitive fund and it's up to 40,000 euro to develop and grow your online retail. So this is also co-funded so you would have to put up 20% of the cost for yourself. I'm pretty sure that it starts at um, that you need to have your application should be looking for um, at least 10,000 euro in funding. So Essentially, if you were putting in an application, your application would have to look for costs for a minimum of at least uh, 12, 12,000 euro. This is for brick and mortar retailers with 10 plus employees, and you must have an existing online presence. Now, that existing online presence can be something as simple as a Facebook page, but you must be online already. It is a competitive fund, and the total fund size available for Ireland is 2 million. And this fund can be used for a range of things. It can be used to put towards a, you can nominate a store champion, one of your existing employees who's going to really uh, champion your, your new online retail space and it can go towards a small salary grant for them. And you can use it to go towards your digital strategy uh, generation. But I'd recommend using the one of the Leo vouchers if you were going to do that. And um, you can add more e-commerce functionality, so you can create new booking features or all that kind of stuff as well. And it can also go towards in-house training. So not external training, not so much training courses on, you know, how to sell online and stuff like that, but more so to have someone come into your workplace and train your, and upskill your employees um, in how to use your very specific e-commerce platform or how your company can use e-commerce to get better. Again, I've attached links um, to all of these uh, vouchers and grants, and you'll be able to grab them from the PDF after the webinar. 
Excellent. So I'm actually flying through this webinar and I'm coming close. I'm pretty sure I'm, I'm, I'm also at the end now. So something I've just been working on, um, I said I'd get around to this. It's something I've been working on. It is supported by the Waterford Chamber as well. And um, it would be actually easier if I just jumped into it. Hopefully you can still see my screen here. I'm just going to open up my web browser. Um, so this is eWaterford.com. It is very much still under development and everything you see here is for testing purposes, but it is a local e-commerce store for businesses in Waterford. It gives you all the functionality of a regular e-commerce store, um, except the idea is that it will be for businesses based in Waterford. Uh, you'll all appear on the map. You can sign up for yourself. You'll be able to add your own products and then sell them all through here through this online local retail store. Like I said, I am, it is, it, it, you are able to go there, it's eWaterford.com and just take a note of the banner at the top, note saying that it is still in development and no orders will be fulfilled at this time. If you are interested in any of this, um, I would recommend you go in there, check it out, head to the login uh, section up there in the top right. You can, in fact, I will very quickly show you what it's like. Um, I'll create a demo account. Um, I'll become a vendor. My name is Brian Hurley. My shop name is Hello Brain Demo. That's fine. That's my shop URL. So this is where your personal shop URL will be. My phone number is 0385118598. And I'm a vendor. So I'll go ahead and click register. Save your password if you want to get in faster next time. And you'll be brought to a nice uh, setup wizard. So you can go ahead and click Let's Go. Choose how many products you want to show per page and enter your delivery details, so your, um, your business details. All right, choose my island, Watford, that's my store name, and then choose your store category. Let's see which one should I go for? Computers and telecommunications, and show my email address in store. Perfect. We go ahead and continue, and there you go. And um, you can skip the payment step because that's not set up yet. We're still in development. And then you've got your store dashboard. So it's initially just a one minute install to get to your store dashboard. This is then what you get set up with. You're able to see that you're able to start adding products to your store and um, nice and simply add new product. And then you can go ahead and upload a product image, upload your product name, price, all that kind of stuff. So it's a full fledged e commerce store for business in Waterford. Um, just a few more features involved, just so I can show you. If you go down to settings, you're able to upload your, uh, change your actual profile. I'll do that as well, just very quickly. And um, throw in a nice image here. Select and crop that. That's gonna be my banner image. Very good, I'll give it a profile picture. I'm gonna use a general one here of these business people for this. Nice and simple, crop that center. And then there we go. A very nice thing down here is actually to, uh, unfortunately, I still set up an idea here. And um, one, yeah, fair. There is. And there we go. Set up on one of the fairways, very flagged. And you can set your store opening times. Anyway, I'll skip through all the rest of the setup there, but you can see what you get there. And then you'll be able to see yourself on the business list there after. So there we go. Hello World Demo. You'll be able to click in and they'll be able to get all your details. So please do get in contact if you would like to learn more about this or if you have um, an idea of how to make it better or if you'd like to become involved in any sort of way possible. That's eWaterford.com. So thank you very much, everybody. I know this. Uh, I know that we had some trouble getting started today and um, there was possibly, poss possibly the wrong time and um, sent out someplace. But I'm pretty sure we got through it all. And um, so let me just see, I'm just gonna go through some of the questions here. I can pop back into my presentation. Very good. Uh, so yes, yeah, so Jackie asks, um, did we speak about Stripe? Yes, so Stripe is very handy. It's a amazing payment gateway. Um, you can use it to 
Well, you, well, the, the e-commerce site I showed you there will actually be using Stripe to take payments online, be able to enter your credit card details and check out on the product, on the product page. It can also be used in the time being. So the reason why I'm asking you to set up Stripe even before you get an e-commerce site is that you can use it to take payments if you don't have an e-commerce site. You can um, email an invoice to someone and they can pay for that invoice using their credit card. So you can take payments essentially through by using email, which is very, very handy. Perfect. No problem, thank you very much for that, Victoria. And um, so listen, everybody, uh, let me see, what's better, Stripe or PayPal? Oh, loaded question, Paul, oh, dangerous question. Let me see, I prefer Stripe. I personally prefer Stripe because I think it's less frills and it's, um, no, no, you're absolutely fine. I think, it, I think it's, I prefer Stripe myself. I think it's simpler. I think it's more straightforward. You know, the payment goes into the account, it gets held there for seven days, and then it gets sent directly into your bank account. And um, PayPal is more like an online bank. You know, you have to go in there, you have to request to ref you, it kind of stores all your money inside PayPal. And then you go in and you request for it to come out. With Stripe, it's much more of an automatic thing. I'm pretty sure the Stripe, the rates in Stripe are better. Um, I didn't call up the rates because they are very much subject to change. But if you head over to Stripe.com, you'll be able to get their most current rates. I think it's about 1.4% or maybe 2.9% and 30 cents plus fat. But yeah, Stripe all the way for me. If I, if I could only pick one, I would pick Stripe, personally. No problem. Sorry, Brian. Um, I just see a, a question coming in here from uh, Neil McGrory. Is, uh, do you recommend using a CRM system? A CRM system? Yeah. Um, I would recommend using a CRM system. Uh, ooh. I would, well, I would recommend every, every company really to use a CRM system because it's a fantastic way to keep, uh, keep all, your, all your customer information in one, in one collated database, which is very handy for stuff like email marketing later on. Um, also with custom email marketing templates, you could even customize if you're keeping a proper CRM system, you know, one of those uh, the creepy CRM systems that know a lot about you, where they're taking notes on you every single, uh, with, with every phone call. And they can do really well in email marketing templates. You know, if someone is very into shoes, then the whole email marketing template can all be about your shoe products and you can leave out everything else. Uh, I'd just like to add to that. We've, uh, in the chamber, recently introduced a CRM system uh, just prior to this crisis. And it certainly proved invaluable uh, for us communicating with our members. So I can highly recommend using a, 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 a CRM system. Uh, actually, Brian, there is another question in there from Sean Cochran, and this is, hi, Brian, thanks for all the relevant info. Uh, we at Art Hand are planning to set up an online shop to start selling photo prints um, of our sand art mm -hmm. and to produce and market a coffee table book uh, of our sand art. Do you have any advice for photo art book sales online? Mm -hmm. um to get started right away with something like photo and book sales, you could take a look at Shopify. And um, it is quite handy to get up and running straight away. Um, and seeing as they are art and paint, because would they, sorry, are they virtual products or would you be actually delivering these, um, sorry, the art hand plan to set up online and start, start selling photo prints of our sand art. Yeah, so something like Shopify can work quite well if you're looking to get up, set up um, nice and quickly to sell products like um, art and books online. So sorry, uh, Joanne is asking if we can recommend any CRM systems. Um, well, the one that I, I, I know and that I'm familiar with is Salesforce, but um, it could be, uh, it's quite heavy handed for, for what a lot of businesses need for. And um, sorry, Gerald, what, what CRM were you? We yeah, we've, we've used a, a dedicated um, CRM system which has been designed for chambers all over the world, so it wouldn't be suitable for all businesses, but uh, I'm sure we can, we, I can do a bit of research on that and, 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 and put a posting up on it on our own social media uh, following this. Uh, just, just one other question there, Brian. Uh, we have uh, a call from Justin, and, and would E. Waterford work for a pub, regards Justin? Would E. Waterford work for a pub? Um, it could work for a pub. I haven't thought about using it for a pub. Um, I, I'll keep an open mind on that. It certainly could be, it would be depend on what, on what you are actually offering for sale through E. Waterford. But as a business listening, absolutely, definitely. 
Yeah, actually, Brian, can I just add to that? It's something we were talking uh, talking about uh, yesterday evening. Mm -hmm. uh, it's this whole concept of uh, a lot of businesses, including uh, pubs and uh, businesses associated with hotels uh, or hospitality, um, are closed down at the moment. Mm -hmm. This whole area of the possibility of buying vouchers uh, to to be able to redeem later on when 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 these premises open up. Uh, Remember that you you might just mention something on that on that on that possibility. Ah yes, well that's um who's who's the, lean on me. Yeah. Uh, the 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 crowd. So lean on me are 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 doing are doing great work, um with the uh, purchasing vouchers in advance to be used after the crisis. I'm sure we'll be. Uh, Sorry, would yeah. you know? You you probably know more about Lean on Me than I would. Oh, well, it, it is. It, it's actually been set up in in Limerick, or it's been trialed in Limerick by a lot of people. Would know he's actually quite a good friend of of Waterford's, John Morn. Uh, he's ex uh, European Investment Bank and chair of the Land Development Agency. And I had a call from him yesterday evening, uh, inquiring if we'd be interested in using their technology as part of our e Waterford site uh, to to sell vouchers. Uh, for businesses that are currently closed, a uh, pub would be a perfect example. A hairdresser would be another example where people will be getting their hair done in the future, but they can buy vouchers uh, from the businesses now. Uh, so the businesses um, them at the moment. will benefit straight away from the cash in these difficult times. And when they reopen, you'd have vouchers uh, which you could use. So that's, that's something where else we're working on uh, to support certain businesses. Very good. Um, I do see a question. We have a Shop Shopify payment system. Do we need a different payment platform for e Watford? Um, yes, you would. I'm not sure who that's who that's from. Um, so, with a lot of e-commerce systems, the two most prevalent ones are Stripe and PayPal. They seem to work with. So, no matter what kind of software you're going with, and um, what kind of system you are going through, you will normally be using something. Uh, you will normally be using Stripe or PayPal. I see mention of Shop Shopify. I'm pretty sure Shopify is using Stripe underneath um, underneath everything to run their payment gateways. Um, but yes, they would be separate payment systems. The idea for we Watford is you are simply entering your email address uh, and password. You know, you log into your Stripe account and then it will set it up for you automatically. Just like how you did on, on Spotify, on Shopify, I should say. Perfect. So I think that is all the questions. What Sorry, I have another one here, Brian. Just, I, I, can you, uh, hi, Brian, just follow up. Uh, it's trying to come up with this solution for social distancing to allow customers on site to use an app to purchase food and drink while not leaving the table um, when we reopen. Sorry, say that again. Sorry. In relation to the pub. Uh, it's, hi, Brian, just to follow up. It's trying to come up with a solution for social distancing to allow customers on site, so I presume customers in the on the premises when they do eventually reopen, to use an app to purchase food and drink while not leaving the table. That sounds like an excellent idea. Um, I would certainly recommend a custom development uh, approach to 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 a solution like that. You could certainly be looking at so stuff like right now the continuity voucher sounds absolutely ideal to start getting consultation on that kind of idea and the trading online voucher can certainly help you build it if you've already got something um, existing and um, some kind of uh, existing kind of website out there and then you could easily move on to some of the enterprise Ireland supports if it was working but certainly the continuity voucher and the trading online voucher are two things you should be looking at right now to develop that kind of technology and to see what um, what what avenues are available for you to put that together. Uh, I have another one there, Brian. It's, uh, hi, what about FlexFit? FlexFit. FlexFit. Um, let me see, FlexFit. FlexFit, I'm assuming FlexFit is another type of payment gateway. And um, if you're using it and you haven't got any problems with it, um, go ahead. Uh, like I said, I want to just give the two main ones that I'm aware of and that I know work work well across most amount of platforms, which is for me, for it is Stripe and, and PayPal. But there are plenty of others. You know, if you're an AIB customer, um, they also offer their own merchant uh, gateways, you know, an AIB credit card merchant gateway. So there's loads of them out there. And some of them require a little bit more setup than others. 
Yeah, I'm just going down through it there. I see uh, Melo from Monkey Cups. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, you have you have uh, covered that question mm -hmm. for me. Um, and that's it. Look, as always, if, if there are any uh, further questions uh, that you think of after the session, uh, please don't hesitate to get in, in touch with us. Um, Brian, again, thank you very much for that. It was most informative. Actually, some of the comments that I'm, I'm, I'm receiving here already um, are, are, are very complimentary. And, and thank you for the time and effort you put into this. Um, again, I'd like to remind you of, of, of this webinar we're, we're, we're hosting tomorrow. Uh, in relation to the financial supports, and that's all the financial supports that are available to you at this difficult time. So um, all I can say is stay safe uh, and, and stay connected. And thanks very much for joining us. Bye. I said, thank you very much, everyone. I'll see you. Bye-bye. <laughs>